So uh, let's talk a little bit about the architecture of this demo. Let's say we have a chip code distributed application where we do have some remote data acquisition, in this case, use remote city of solar panels as examples. And uh, in each one of those seats, we have a framework edge that will be pushing data to a frameworks and limits that will be running in a centralized location, uh, serving data through directly window clients, iOS clients, HTML5, and also archiving uh, the canary, the data on Canary on that, and using MQTT at the device level. So that's more or less a typical architecture. And the idea of the demo is to show very easily how we can uh, do that very simple steps of configurations, okay? Uh, any questions so far, Dave? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Let's uh, keep moving here. So uh, we will uh, now uh, go and show a little bit of the live demo. Okay. Uh, so if Dave or Philip, you just can give me some confirmation if the quality is okay now. It looks good. Yes, please. Because I had that problem, Dave, from time to time, don't be shy and talk with me. <laughs> I need to make <laughs> sure I'm alive here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so what we have here as I was describing is the implementation of that scenario where we have just asset modeling. And the key points in the architecture that we are trying to leverage uh, here is that we did the application so the number of the seats are exactly how many assets we have on the seats and all these interface is uh, uh, aware about the asset model itself so uh, how the display will look the even how much data you bring to the system you don't need to do project changes uh, to be able to do that and I'm going to show in a little bit later how we accomplish that configuration. Uh, but it was really easy to do so. So when I select here this city, I am showing only two assets. If I go to this city, this, in this case, I have five assets. Uh, the pop-up information that I get uh, from the assets it's, of course, one template screen that you apply whatever selected assets you have. The same way when you change uh, from map view to dashboard view, if you're going to show five elements or two elements, it's dependent on what we have on the asset modeling. And also, if you select the details of one asset, uh, the UI will go uh, accordingly to that interface. But the key points I want to make sure you get the idea, it's not only the UI responsive for your asset modeling. As you're going to see on the configuration, everything in the application is responsive to that. So the amount of data we are reading, the amount of text stories we are creating on Canary, everything's driven by the assets, not by your application engineering. Uh, any other comments on that, Dave, before I go to the engineering? Nope, you're good to go. Good. And what would you try before I go to the engineering? What we really try to show here in more uh, detail is, in fact, that we have the, those many areas that, uh, let's go back to that slide. I really like it, the way Harry presented. Uh, we are going to show uh, what are the new features we added to that release on those many components. The first one, in fact, was I showing. We have this uh, enhanced web HTML5 interface with a new objects to do asset visualization. 
with the new con with some new controls. So uh, we did a reasonable amount of uh, enhancements in our HTML5 interface, as well, of course, a very complete support for both Windows and Linux in, in native UIs if you need that for your panel. Okay. Another key point that uh, Dave pointed out is like connectivity and this new concept of tech provider. So let's explore a little bit this concept and some basic explanation before I show the configuration. We are working a lot with that concept of unified namespace where instead of worrying too much about tags or what applications you have in this system, you really make sure you have a well-defined asset modeling, a well-defined namespace around your data, and uh, your data sources should be able to really have the best of your life. This data should be dynamic when you add one more element in your MQTT network. Uh, so the way uh, our software uh, with the 9.2 uh, is designed to work is uh, if now I, I have in my data sources, I add one more panel in this city, or I add one more, even one more city, uh, the requirement is we don't need to do zero new programming on the applications, zero as long as, of course, the new data, they have the proper faith place to fit in your unified namespace. <laughs> so the new concept of the called self-awareing or self-adapting applications, if you have a strong data model, you can add or remove assets in that model dynamically without having to change any configuration in your custom solution. That makes sense to you, Dave? Yes. Good. So let's start to go in detail to see uh, how is uh, exactly uh, the architecture uh, that we have around this demo. What we put running here uh, is a full architecture running a few applications in this case, I'm running the same computer, but this application we are including as uh, demo applications with the new release. So we are going to find two new example projects, asset monitors and edge collector. There are two main components to implement this architecture. And so the edge application is running here and we're running also in this station our embedded MQTT broker to receive data from our MQTT simulator. <laughs> so we do have uh, all those components uh, running here in addition to Canary uh, in this architecture. So if you just put the main project application to run when you are playing for them by yourself, when you run the main application, that's the asset monitor, is this application that's providing the user interface, the web pages, it will start all those components. So the data flow is the, from the MQTT simulator or from your MQ data sources to the broker we run embedded in our edge device that the edge will forward that to Canary Story. One thing that's also optional in the architecture, but we put here is we also have this gateway technology. So if your edge device cannot reach out Canary Story or the server computer directly, for instance, you need to switch from level two to level four on network security, okay? Uh, we can do that through the gateway, putting the gate in a GMZ. So the gateway allows to route data through GMZs where you need to cross security networks. Or, of course, our Edge application then publish application directly to your students or to your main application. And on top of that, we have the UI 
And as you saw, uh, we provided the user interface in native Windows, which is this one, and in HTML5, uh, which is this one here. So the same server is able to provide according requirements, one or another, or even both user interfaces outside from the main projects, okay? Uh, before I switch to show the project configuration, Dave, uh, do you have any question or anything that you want to highlight in the architecture? Uh, no, I think I think we're good. I want to make sure we get get through everything that we want to show before we get to questions. Unless Perfect. someone has something that needs, you know, a, yes, a question can, specific as, about this. Yes, you can keep using the chat area that Philip is there replying some questions right away. And before I go to the configuration, just quick parenthesis. One of the screens you have in this project is uh, what also zero programming is just a template page created automatically. And you saw David pointed out some of our enhancements are related to make our project templates even a little bit smarter than they are. And that's an example of diagnostic tool you have by stand if the application just by enabling your project to use that proper project templates. So let's switch to the project configuration here and where we have the two major components. This edge application is the one that are going to put in all your remote sites setting data to the student, and this application is the implementation of the user interface. So let's start uh, opening the configuration for the collector. And it's really only two lines. This presentation tends to go in details of everything, but that I can go, because frankly. The only thing you need to do uh, on the edge device is to use that our, our new concept of tag providers. When Harry said dynamic tag provider, it's because when you map a Spark Plug P connection or a MQTT connection, the objects you'll be able to browse and see from that connection, they are dynamically based on whatever you have in that broker now. And that's same to all tech providers. So when you create that connection, you can, for instance, create a connection also to Canary, in that case, using our gauging technology. And with one, one, one line of configuration only, what I'm saying, okay, uh, publish on the Canary provider, uh, all data from that MQTT connection starting at three level group ID. <laughs> so essentially what this configuration is telling the application to do uh, is to dynamically see what we have under this three group ID and publish that dynamically to the Canary historian connection. Okay, that's it. Uh, let's talk uh, with the marketing guys because if they if they think it's easy, we are in a good path. Any comments there, Dave? <laughs> it's amazing how easy that is. Um, I, I just can't imagine having yeah. come up with, with that concept. That's really good and well, a huge time saver. Just just two lines and yes. And in fact, in future releases, we are going to have new user interface tools on the project engineering. Because to this type of the project, when they say, oh, you have a script, you have this, you have that. Yeah, but nothing of that is really used in this application. So we're going to even create some more simplified UI tools in our future roadmap. Because some of applications now, they are so lean <laughs> that uh, sometimes intimidating all the tools you see, when in fact you need to do only two or three lines of configuration to accomplish mm -hmm what you want to do.